Hey guys, welcome to our side-by-side -side comparison uh, of what we've learned in chapter 10, dealing with the difference in two proportions and also dealing with the difference in two means. So first, the confidence interval for the difference in two population proportions, P1 minus P2. So we'll start with that. So the estimate for P1 minus P2, of course, is whatever your P hat 1 minus P hat 2 is in your two samples two independent samples. You subtract, that's your estimate for that. Of course, in hopes of capturing that, we build a net around it with our confidence interval. So we do plus or minus the margin of error, which is made up of two components, the critical value and the standard deviation or standard error of your statistic. So our critical value here is gonna be a Z star value, the ZAT tax. The Z goes with, Z goes with P or proportions, and t goes with x bars or means. So for proportions, we're going to do z. So this is going to be a critical z here times the standard error, right? We can't use the standard deviation of the sampling distribution because we don't know what p1 and p2 are. If we did, we wouldn't need to estimate it with a confidence interval, right? So our standard error is going to look like this. Uh, p hat 1 times 1 minus p hat 1 over n1 plus p hat 2 times 1 minus p hat 2 over n2. All of this under the square root. So that's the structure of your confidence interval when you're dealing with the difference in two proportions. Now for means, we can build the confidence interval there. So that's going to be our estimate. And of course your estimate for that is at x bar 1 minus x bar 2. So there's your estimate for the true difference, mu 1 minus mu 2. We're going to build a net around it. So plus or minus our margin of error made up of two components again, the critical value and the standard error of your statistic. So the critical value here is going to be a T star value. Again, zap tax. T goes with X bars. All right, so if we're doing means, we're going to use a T, critical T, so that's T star. And the standard error here, again, we can't get the standard deviation of this sampling distribution because we don't know the standard deviations of the two populations. So we use the standard error. So we use the standard deviations of the samples, S1 and S2. So S1 squared over N1 plus S2 squared over N2. And this is the structure for the confidence interval when you're estimating the difference in two population means. Okay, so now we're moving on to significance tests. So the test statistic for this case is going to be a Z test statistic, zap tax, Z goes with proportions. So our Z test statistic will be our estimate, which is uh, P hat 1 minus P hat 2 minus the hypothesized P1 minus P2, we'll call that P1 minus P2 naught. Although we should make the point here that when we're dealing with proportions, this, for our case, this is going to be zero here. So we're really only going to see proportion problems where the true difference is hypothesized to be zero. So that's the numerator. And then the denominator is going to be the standard error of the statistic, which you might think is this. But as we've seen, it's going to be slightly different than that. And there's a good reason for it. So here's the standard error here. It's going to be this p hat c times 1 minus p hat c over n1 plus, again, p hat c times 1 minus p hat c over n2. And the reason we have to use that pooled or combined proportion here is because in our null hypothesis, we're going to be assuming that these two are equal, right? So if p1 equals p2, in other words, p1 minus p2 is 0, and we're going to assume that these values are equal, then we have to use the same values here. So that's why we do this uh, sort of weighted average to get that combined p hat. And remember how to calculate that p hat combined. That p hat combined, or pooled p hat, was the total number of successes between your two samples divided by your total of your sample sizes. So watch out for that. 
that's what the standard error is going to be when you calculate your z-test statistic when doing a significance test for the difference in two proportions. Now we go on to means, and of course this is going to be a t-test statistic. So it's apt x. T is for means. T goes with x-bars. So our t-test statistic is going to be the estimate, which is our x-bar 1 minus x-bar 2, minus our hypothesized mu1 minus mu2 naught, which also typically will be zero, although we've seen where we've seen an example in the homework where that wasn't a zero. And then over the standard error, and it is going to be the same standard error as we see in the confidence interval, the square root of S1 squared over N1 plus S2 squared over N2. So here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the key formulas involved when we're getting our test statistics for a significance test and as you can see for our confidence intervals. So now we're going to move on to the conditions for each of these. So first for the difference in two population proportions, of course we have the random check. So we have two independent samples. So you do have to mention that in these two population um, tests or intervals that we're doing, that we have two independent samples, uh, both taken or each taken randomly, let's say it that way. But of course that's going to be the same for our population means. So the random condition, again, two independent samples taken from two independent populations. So two independent samples, uh, each taken randomly. So the same in both cases. Alrighty, so there's the random check. Then we have the 10% condition. So with the 10% condition, and of course, this is always when we're sampling without replacement, which is what we're usually doing. So if sampling without, so that's short for without replacement, each sample size Is less than 10% of its respective population. And over here, when we're doing means, 10%, well, it's gonna be the same, right? So if, it will be, I guess, briefer here, sampling uh, without replacement, so I'm trying to abbreviate here, I guess. Uh, sampling without replacement, uh, each sample. So you have to check it twice, right? Each sample, less than or equal to 10% of its population. But you don't have to check it twice. Okay, and by the way, we check this, the random condition, so that uh, our p hat one minus p hat twos will center around the true p1 minus p2. In fact, if we did all of them theoretically, they would average to that value, p1 minus p2. And in that case, they would average to mu1 minus mu2. That's why we're sampling randomly. And then the 10% condition is checked so that we can use those standard deviation formulas. This formula right here, which we know typically would use p, p1 and p2. This formula right here, which would typically use sigma 1 and sigma 2, these formulas stem from the fact that we have independence within our samples, right? And when we're sampling without replacement, we really don't have that, right? The probabilities are changing, right? So in order to use those standard deviation, which become standard error formulas, this condition has to be checked. Now, the next condition that's coming for both, we have to do that to make sure our sampling distribution is approximately normal. So this next condition is important for that, 
right? And if we're talking about proportions, it's large counts. But there's an added wrinkle for proportions, and that is that this condition is different for the confidence interval than it is for the significance test. So for the confidence interval, what you're going to do is n1 p hat 1, n1 1 minus p hat 1. And by the way, when you do this, you're going to get number of successes, number of failures in that group. And then in the other group, the same, n2 times 1 minus p hat 2, you're going to get the number of successes and number of failures in that group. And of course, all have to be greater than equal to 10. What's different is in the significance test, as you might recall, again, we're running significance tests with proportions, assuming that the true population proportions are equal. So when you check this condition, you have to do n1 p hat c, n1 times 1 minus p hat c, n2 times p hat c, and n2 times 1 minus p hat c. And all of these have to be greater than equal to 10. And once you start using the p hat c, it's no longer number of successes, number of failures. But there's still numbers that all have to be greater than equal to 10. So for the significance test, we're going to do this. You'll notice in your textbook, they'll just do this for both. But a recent change in the course description for AP Statistics from the College Board said, nah, if you're doing a significance test, you really should do this and not this. Okay, and if these condition, if this condition that is is met for large counts, that's important in terms of the approximate normality of your sampling distribution of all your p hat one minus p hat twos. Now the condition over here that is going to make us comfortable with an approximate normal distribution for the distribution of x bar one minus x bar twos is the normal large sample condition. This will be the same for both confidence intervals and significance tests here. So either both populations are normal, or both, size, both sample sizes are greater than 30. Say greater than or equal to 30. And when you're doing this one over here, right, sometimes we have to look at the sample distributions, right? When is that? Well, if we're sampling more than 30 in both cases, we definitely don't have to do that. Because in that situation, it doesn't matter what the shape of the populations are. And the reason we look at the distribution of the samples is because they mimic the population, right? So if the sample size is greater than 30, it doesn't matter what the shape of the populations are. But if you're sampling less than 30, this is only going to work, the normality of your sampling distribution, if the populations you're drawing from are normal. Usually we don't know the shapes of those population distributions. And so when we're less than 30, we're going to look at the sample distributions and look for, you know, not perfect normality, but, you know, rough symmetry. We're going to look for the lack of major skew and outliers. If it has some slight skew, we might say, okay, that's okay. But if we see major skew or outliers, we're going to say that condition fails. And again, we're only going to look at those samples if the sample sizes are less than 30. If they're bigger than 30, it doesn't matter what the shape of the population is, thanks to the central limit theorem. All right, so this is a summary of the side-by-side -side comparison of the difference in proportions and the difference in means in our chapter 10.